This is my love of clay. I hope you know how passionate I am about you and your work and what a joy it is to do this for you. Sierra, you've created a very large and ongoing project. What was the genesis of it? It started when my brother Chewy was dying of AIDS and we became aware of people's fear of dying. This is my brother Chewy's angel. He was a fearless and goofy person. He died in 1992 and it represents AIDS. Did you know at the time that it would be as large as it's become? <laughs> no, I mean, absolutely not. It would have been way too daunting. It started with skulls and bones, and I photographed them in the desert. It was my brother who said, you've got the beginnings of an archeological dig here, but I didn't do anything with it for a while. I was scheduled to do a show at Sim Gallery in Pasadena. In 2008, when that show went up, it had taken on a life of its own. I had created a thousand bones, 400 skulls, 150 hearts, 29 sculptures, and 15 canopic jars. What is a canopic jar? In Egypt, when powerful people died, their viscera were put in these jars that were called canopic jars. What did you put into your canopics? the incandescence of the human spirit. Now, as that can be very flamey and very charming, it's everything that we need or could use or could learn from. The name of your project is DIG, an imagined archeologism. Tell us what that means. Logo is the Greek for word, and I love storytelling, myth, the evolution of propaganda, and so that's many, many words. And so in the process, we came up with the name DIG and Imagined Archaeologism, which is a site with enormous scope for storytelling. And I used two myths, Medusa for women. Daedalus and Icarus for men. They will expand out from DIG. Anything that I have done, any shows I've been invited into, I've found out that they can expand into my project, either with my ideas or the ideas of others, which is what I really wanted to do. I wanted to never have to stop working on this project. I would, I would love to find a space here. Ideally, it would be the Hammer. Then Chicago, New York. In Paris, the Jeu de Pomme. In Berlin, I don't know yet. In London, the New Tate. In Spain, Bilbao. I don't know where. In Johannesburg, which is the seat of lots, lots of the archaeological finds. And then into Asia, and perhaps Japan. I want to travel all over the world working. That has always been my dream. Culturally, I think we live in a nation that's afraid of death and dying, and it has really warped our perception of life. Because of all the skulls and bones and the hearts, they fit beautifully in the palms of your hands. I want people in my shows. I want them handling the work. I want them to be forced to face their fear without knowing that's what they're being asked to do. And there have been people who have come into my shows that have been so horrified they could barely walk in the room, but when someone walked them through and handed them pieces, they were able to see that it's about living and living well, as opposed to living and killing off. Describe a bit about how people respond to your work. 
One man came in whose son had committed suicide by walking onto the Tutan freeway, and he saw the Icarus and Daedalus piece and was so powerfully moved that he showed his father, and his father thought it was an extraordinary. So it has salved the heart in some. It's heightened their heartbeat in others. It's repelled at first people, but I've never seen people leave it going, ugh, this is disgusting, I can't bear it. Because there's character in each of the pieces. They're huge piles of skulls and bones and hearts, and they're piled separately, but they're also piled in heaps, like in the killing fields or catacombs. What people are invited to do is handle the skulls and bones and hearts because we sell them by the pound. People actually dig through. And they can go all the way to the bottom to find things. It'll be interesting if how the museums recover from having an exhibition where everything is everyone's invited to touch and then they have to go back. I know. That's one of You're the You're a bit that, of a revolutionary, <laughs> I can I see. I really and I don't care if things get broken, I can make more. That's the thing about it. It isn't a stock installation. It's an expanding installation. And stuff that was in the, um, the first dig in imagined archaeologism won't be there. But perhaps I intend to make a three-foot coelacanth, the mother of all fishes, that will take the place of the wolf, say, that was there and sold. See, so yeah, there's a destructive element in the subject matter of the work, but there's also this wonderful playfulness. If we don't experience the depths, we can't experience the heights. Conflict exists, and differences exist, and people's misunderstandings of differences exist. My hope is to expand the ability to accept and, and curiosity about the difference. That's really what I would love more than anything else. The stories that I write to go with each project have the painful, the powerful, and the absurd. Now, how I make that into things, sometimes I really don't know. You were involved in a group show last year called Meditations on the Apocalyptic. Was that work in any way related to your archaeologism? Ab absolutely. Uh, Patrick Merrill, who curated that show, came to the opening of Dig in 2008 at SIM. And he invited me there. He said, you want to be in this show, Meditations on the Apocalyptic? And there is absolutely no way I could have resisted that title. I created what I considered to be the antidote to the apocalyptic meditations, which was Angels for the Afflicted. And that's where the angels first came into being. So I think we're all touched. We all need the angels for the afflicted. Where are you at present with your dig site? I want to build the Medusa line. Medusa in Sanskrit means sovereign female wisdom, and that's the oldest recorded language. Two, three, maybe four centuries later in Greek, she becomes a villainous snake-haired monster. How does that happen? Also, I've watched women of power in contemporary times, and the more powerful they become, the more they are equated with Medusa the villain with the serpents. I believe Eve is an extension of the Medusa myth. There are so many elements in this project that are female in origin and catastrophically treated in behavior. My intention is to build Medusa Steps Out and see where that goes. This is all dressed up with nowhere to go and she's the opening factor of Medusa steps out. She's lost her serpent, she has on her party frock, but she doesn't have anyone to play with because people don't like her. What is your long-term plan for your imagined archaeological site? My dream is to travel the world with my work. I want to 
encounter other cultures who have different reactions, the subject of women, the subject of childbearing, the subject, the myth of marriage, the myth that the earth isn't being damaged, and the myth that we haven't extincted vast cultures, and also the misunderstandings between people. And I want to be able to get in amongst people in big ways and pull them in in big ways to start the conversations and hear what other people think. I would like more experiences like the people I had whose families were in the Holocaust or their children were damaged or something has happened or anyone who has sent their child to war. And I want to talk to that. I want to talk to the absurd. I want to talk to the delight people find. And I would like to help people become less afraid of death and dying.